What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here to discuss the top 10 NFL head coaches of all time. If you have not already checked out some of my other top 10 NFL list, make sure you do. Check out the channel. If you enjoy the NFL and you enjoy top 10s, you will love this channel. Check out my last top 10 of the top 10 NFL defensive players of all time. But this video is about the top 10 NFL head coaches in NFL history. The criteria was broken down into three simple distinctions. One, accomplishments. What did they accomplish? What did they win? And how did they win? What was their career record? And then we go to dominance. How dominant were they over the opposing organizations, opposing head coaches, and opposing teams? And the last thing for head coaching was innovation. What did those coaches do during their time? Were they innovative as a coach? Did they bring something new to the game? So those were the three things in the criteria that I took into account when making this top 10 list. Let's start off with number 10 with one of the older coaches and one of the more historic names in pro football, Curly Lambeau. Curly Lambeau was the Green Bay Packers first ever coach. He was also a part owner of the Green Bay Packers and a player for the Green Bay Packers. Other than the Green Bay Packers, he coached for the Cardinals and the Redskins. His career record was 229, 134, and 22 ties. He was 3-2 and two in the postseason and a six-time NFL champion. Curly Lambeau is responsible for one of the first NFL dynasties ever to take place. He was, of course, the first coach of Green Bay, which in his honor named their home stadium after him, Lambeau Field. Lambeau also helped pioneer the passing game, the pro football as we see it now passing game in the 1930s with Don Hudson, one of the greatest receivers of all time. So for all those accomplishments, taking into account his long career as not only a coach, but a player and a founder of one of the most historic franchises in football history, Curly Lambeau belongs in the top 10 just sneaking in at number 10. We move on to number nine, which is Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs was, of course, a coach for the Washington Redskins in two stints. He spent time in college at many different programs as an offensive line and a running back coach before making his way to the NFL. Uh, he made his way to St. Louis, uh, the Cardinals at the time for four years as the running back coach, and then the offensive coordinator at the Buccaneers and Chargers. He was the Redskins head coach from 1981 to 1992 and 2004 to 2007. He was a two-time coach of the year, a four-time NFC champion, going to the Super Bowl four times and winning it three times. He had a career record of 171 and 101 with zero ties. His postseason record was a pretty impressive 17-7, and, and not only was Joe Gibbs very impressive in terms of his, his wins in the regular and postseason with three Super Bowls to his name and two Coach of the Years, but he also invented numerous things on the offensive side of the ball. He invented the single back offense with the double or triple tight end set. This was made to stop, of course, Lawrence Taylor, who he had to coach against during his time in Washington, during his first stint in Washington, where he had to try and take out the greatest defensive player of all time, consistently getting after his quarterback. He had to try and stop Lawrence Taylor, so he implemented a double or triple tight end set to try and block this freak of nature. Then he also invented the trips formation, uh, also known as the bunch formation in the single back. Uh, he utilized three receivers to one side with one to the other side. He was also uh, very creative with his offense by using an H-back and one of the only coaches to use an H-back in their NFL offense as well. So Joe Gibbs did a lot in the NFL. Not only was he a very creative offensive mind, but he was a straight-up winner with a very impressive postseason career and an impressive uh, Washington Redskins run. He's definitely the best coach in Redskins history and comes in at number nine on my top 10 NFL head coaches of all time. At number eight, I have Chuck Knoll. Chuck Knoll was the Pittsburgh Steelers coach in the 70s. Everybody knows Chuck Knoll's famous uh, teams for the 70s. 
the 70s defenses of the Steelers um, and the dynasty of the Steelers. Chuck Knoll was responsible for that. He was also a play, player for the Steelers even before he became a head coach. He was an, in the AFL with the Chargers as a defensive line coach and a DB coach for them before he made his way to the Steelers. He was also the Baltimore Colts defensive coach where he started his runs with numerous different defenses, bringing that all to the Steelers as a head coach from 1969 all the way to 1991. The Steelers have actually only had like three coaches in their entire existence, which is super impressive and is by far the least amount for any team. Um, But Chuck Knoll carried not only a long career, but he carried one with a lot of success. He was a four-time Super Bowl champion and a four-time AFC champion. He won 209 games, lost 156, and had one tie. That's including postseason, but the more impressive postseason record is that he was 16-8 and eight in the postseason. So he doubled up his wins to losses. And not only was Chuck Knoll a great coach on the offensive and defensive side of the balls, uh, really having a lot of different Hall of Famers on both sides. The Steelers in the 70s could be really the best team of all time. So considering that, not only did he have the likes of Terry Bradshaw, Lynn Swan, Stallworth, Franco Harris on the defensive side of the ball, you know, Lambert, Ham, and Mel Blunt, and all these, Mean Joe Green, all these different guys on his defense and offense, but he impacted African-American culture in the NFL because he was responsible for a lot of different players to become coaches. He's part of the reason why Mike Tomlin is a coach for the Steelers right now. He's also part of the reason why Tony Dungy was such a, such a successful coach in the NFL as well. So Chuck Knoll not only had an impact in terms of his teams, his winning, but also had an impact with the African-American culture in the NFL as we see it today. So Chuck Knoll comes in at number eight on my top 10 list. And then we go to number seven, which is a guy that many people overlook when they discuss the best coaches of all time. But this guy, it really is if you ask some of the great coaches around the league, this is a guy that helped the NFL in numerous different capacities that doesn't really get uh, a lot of credit. And that is George Hallis. George Hallis was a co-founder of the NFL when it, ver- when it really just started. He was a six-time NFL champion, a two-time NFL coach of the year, and had a ridiculous career record of 318 wins, 148 losses, and 31 ties. He coached for her 40 years in the NFL. Um, just a crazy, crazy career. He was also 6-3 and three in the playoffs and was instrumental into creating the Chicago Bears Monsters of the Midway defense. Um, he created many different things in his time in the NFL. Not only was he a coach, but like I said, he was a co-founder of the entire league. So he had a lot of influence when it came to practicing, when it came to team development, and he created the daily practice. He created teams practicing daily every single week leading up to their game on Sundays. Um, He invented, not really invented, but innovated the way that you watch film, analyze film to help your team uh, prepare for the game. So that was one of the big things that he brought to the game. He also brought in placing assistant coaches in press boxes. So, you know, now how we see offensive and defensive coordinators in the press box or quarterback or running back coaches in the press box. George Hallis was the first to do that. He was the first to put the offensive coordinator in a press box up up, up high, not on the field, so that they could call the plays um, and also analyze the game. So George Hallis not only was a great coach, coaching for f- over 40 years uh, and being a six-time NFL champion, but he helped create a lot of the modern things that we see today in the game. He was a visionary when it came to that. And when it came to putting the teams on TV, putting the teams on markets so that they could be seen and watched. So George Hallis was a huge influencer and innovator for the NFL. And he comes in at number seven for the seventh greatest coach in NFL history. We move on to number six, which is every Cowboys favorite coach, 
Tom Landry. Tom Landry was like that mystique. He had the hat, and he had the, just the silent nature. But he was a Dallas Cowboys coach from 1960 all the way till 1978. He had a career record of 250 wins, 162 losses, and six ties. He coached for 29 years in his career. That includes times with uh, the New York Giants as the defensive coordinator, where he, t he teamed up with Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi was the offensive coordinator in New York, and they won a championship as offensive and defensive coordinators. Talk about a stacked coaching staff. He was 20-16 and 16 in the playoffs. Very impressive playoff uh, career. That's the second most playoff wins in history. He just made the playoffs very consistently. Tom Landry almost never had a losing season. He had 20 straight winning seasons as a coach. That's super, super impressive. And that is why Dallas is really known as America's team. Tom Landry, as much as he didn't like the name America's team because he actually thought that the other team gained an advantage for it, he was part of the reason because they were so successful. They were constantly winning and America constantly loves winners. Everybody loves a winner. So Tom Landry was responsible for bringing the Cowboys uh, dynasty about in the 70s and really bringing numerous great Hall of Fame type talents to the forefront of the NFL. He was absolutely crazy in terms of his uh, accomplishments, 13 division titles. He had five Super Bowl appearances. He was a two-time Super Bowl champion. And like I said, 20 straight winning seasons. You can't take that away from him. He also invented one of the more influential defenses in NFL history. He influenced and he invented the 4-3 defense. The 4-3 defense, as we know it, is the four defensive linemen along the line with three linebackers. He also created a 4-3 defense that was known as the flex defense system, which was made famous by the doomsday defense. And he had 29 seasons coaching with only one losing season. So Tom Landry comes in at number six as one of the more consistent winners in NFL history and an innovator on the defensive side of the ball. We come in with an offensive innovator at number five. Number five is a lot of people's favorite coach. For whatever reason, this guy always gets brought up in terms of one of their favorite coaches or one of the most famous coaches that has ever coached, but it's Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh is probably the most influential offensive mind in NFL history. He was a running back coach um, in a couple of different places, also an offensive assistant in Cincinnati, uh, in San Diego, and he was a head coach for Stanford. He was also the head coach for the San Francisco 49ers from 1979 to 1988. He was also the VP slash the GM of the 49ers from 1999 to 2001 and a consultant from 02 to 04. Bill Walsh is a three-time Super Bowl champion. He won six division titles. He was a two-time coach of the year. He had a career record in the regular season of 92-59-1 and one, and a playoff record of 10-4. and four. He is, of course, the creator of the West Coast offense, which is the most influential offense in NFL today. Um, every offense has West Coast elements to it, and that's why Bill Walsh is known to be one of the more popular coaches not only around fans, but around the league because of what he did for the offensive side of the ball. He was really part of the reason why it became an offensive game and why teams now are scoring at such the rate and why the NFL has tried to make the game an offensive game because Bill Walsh created this offensive system that was the West Coast system that opened up the passing game, that opened up different things that nobody ever seen before and helped the NFL expand its horizons in terms of offensive football. He was also a very innovative play caller with numerous different created plays that he made himself. 
Um, and when he was the coach for the 49ers, it's like nobody ever seen those plays before. <laughs> That's why like people talk about the 49ers dynasty, but really people had never seen some of this stuff that Bill Walsh was trying to do. So just by that happening, they already had an advantage. Uh, so he was a huge, huge coaching um just influence across the NFL even to this day and he also has probably the biggest coaching tree that there's ever existed uh one for example is Andy Reid who is currently one of the more uh successful NFL head coaches but there's numerous other head coaches that have uh, been around and still here today because they were from Bill Walsh's West Coast offense so Bill Walsh comes in at number Five for the fifth greatest head coach of all time and definitely the greatest offensive mind in NFL history. At number four, I have Don Shula, who Don Shula might be the ultimate winner when it comes to a head coach. Uh, Don Shula was a defensive coordinator for two years for the Lions before becoming the Baltimore Colts head coach from 1963 to 1969. The most impressive stat I found about Don Shula is that he took five different quarterbacks to Super Bowls. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, so not only was he a great head coach with the Colts and with the Dolphins from 63 all the way till 1995 when he finally retired, but he took five different quarterbacks to Super Bowls. Uh, so not only did he take great quarterbacks like Dan Marino to a Super Bowl, but he took great other quarterbacks uh, to Super Bowls as well. He was a five-time coach of the year, a two-time Super Bowl champion, a one-time NFL champion, and a five-time AFC champion. He was a 14-time division title winner, which is one of the best of all time. Uh, most regular season wins ever, with 328 regular season wins, comparing to only 156 losses, and had a postseason record of 19 and 17, which I think is third all time. He had the perfect season under his belt in 1972, the only team ever to go perfect, 17-0. No other team has gone uh, perfect in a regular season. Now, a team has gone 17-0, but never perfect. Uh, he also started and actually started to form the 3-4 defense in the NFL. He was one of the first to actually create the 3-4 defense, which I didn't know until I started doing research for this guy, but... He did numerous different things. He was an innovator on the defensive side of the ball. He was an innovator in terms of getting the most out of his players, uh, work ethic, practicing, and also just the absolute consistent winning that he did for probably the longest coaching career we've ever seen, especially for a head coach. Uh, Don Shula, absolutely great coach, and he had only two losing seasons in 36 seasons. So when I talked about Tom Landry being one of the more consistent coaches, I think you can say Don Shula is also one of the most consistent coaches. He comes in at number four for the fourth greatest head coach in NFL history. Now I have decided to put Paul Brown at number three. Paul Brown was a six-time coach of the year, a three-time NFL champion, and a four-time AAFC champion. That's also known as the AFC um, 166 wins, 100 losses, and six ties. He doesn't have a very impressive playoff record of four and eight, but there is a lot of different things that Paul Brown did. This that is the reason why he's at number three. Paul Brown was the biggest innovator, in my opinion, in NFL history. So that being said, he comes in at number three because of these things. Not only were the Cleveland Browns actually named after him because of all he did for the Cleveland franchise, but he did move to Cincinnati and tr and basically created that team as well, and he was the first head coach for them. He was very and still the most successful head coach for the Browns, and they've never really been good without him. He created the draw play in the NFL, which we know today that is heavily utilized. He also developed detailed passing patterns before Paul Brown, it was very simple, but a after Paul Brown, it totally took the next step in terms of the passing game. So not only was uh, Curly Lambeau and Bill Walsh very influential on the offensive side of the ball, but Paul Brown was as well. And a lot of Paul Brown's things that 
he did back then still exists today, including the draw play, including the detailed passing patterns. But he also created the modern passing pocket, which uh, a lot of people don't even know that there's actual assigned assignments for offensive linemen to drop back a certain amount of depth to keep the quarterback safe. But Paul Brown actually created that. He created offensive line protection schemes to buy the quarterback more time. He created the way that teams function in terms of organizationally, from the top to bottom, from owner to GM to head coach. He also created scouting, the way that teams scout today, the way that teams draft today. All of that was created by Paul Brown. Paul Brown comes in at number three as the third greatest head coach of all time. The reason why he's not higher is because his coaching resume isn't as good as the other two guys. But in terms of an innovator, I believe that he is the biggest innovator in pro football history. We go to number two, uh, which was very difficult, but I believe that number one just surpassed him this season. Uh, Number two is Vince Lombardi. Now, everybody knows who Vince Lombardi is. Vince Lombardi is probably the most famous coach maybe in any sport at any time. Uh, He has numerous quotes. He is an unforgettable image. And of course, the name that is the Super Bowl trophy, the Lombardi trophy, it's named that for a reason. Because he not only won the two first two Super Bowls, but he won six NFL championships. He was a two-time NFL coach of the year. He had a record of 96, 34, and 6, and a playoff record of 9, and 1. His overall record was 105, 35, and 6, and he had three straight NFL titles and also five in seven years. So Vince Lombardi's Packers is probably the most winning team ever. Uh, Now, he didn't have to deal with salary cap and all that stuff, but to win five championships in seven years with constant rotation of injuries and, you know, keeping that core together and keeping the same message to that same core key players on your team is also a very important and crucial skill for a coach. Because every once in a while, a team, even with so much success, will lose the message and will get overconfident and will start to lose games. But not with Vince Lombardi's Packers because Vince Lombardi was very influential in the terms of work ethic, in terms of practicing. And he's even influential in people's daily lives today because of his motivational quotations and things like that. So Vince Lombardi... Uh, never had a losing season in the NFL. He won a title before he was even a head coach with the New York Giants, as I brought up with Tom Landry. He was the offensive coordinator. And as that offensive coordinator, he created what is known as the Lombardi sweep, uh, the sweep run play to the outside that is still utilized today in different formations, but the key um, actual process of the play is still carried out today. Um, and was huge for the 60s Packers, which they utilized that play a lot. Uh, He also created rule blocking, which was introduced in New York, where one player would not necessarily guard a man, but he would guard a zone. So he basically created zone blocking, rule blocking. Um, Vince Lombardi, very, very influential head coach. Um, probably the most famous head coach of all time. And for God's sakes, the guy's name is on the Super Bowl. So he is obviously one of the greatest head coaches of all time. Um, But he's only been surpassed by one man and one man only. The only head coach to be more successful in his career than Vince Lombardi is Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick coached for a lot of different franchises. The Baltimore Colts, the Detroit Lions, the Denver Broncos, the New York Giants, the New York Jets. And finally, he started to head coach for the Cleveland Browns and then the New England Patriots, where he is made famous. He's head coach for the Patriots and the Browns. He has an extensive knowledge when it comes to football. There's probably nobody that is more knowledgeable about the game of football than Bill Belichick because of his numerous years of experience in different organizations under different great minds of football, but also in different areas of teaching. He not only has experience as a, as a defensive mind, Uh, that everybody knows him as the great defensive mind, but he was also a special teams coach. 
He was a receivers coach. He was a linebackers coach. He was a secondary coach. And of course, a defensive specialist. So not only does he know defensive side of the ball, he knows the offensive side of the ball, he knows the special teams, which is why the Patriots nowadays are the most prepared team in the NFL week in and week out. Bill Belichick is a seven-time Super Bowl champion. That's five as a head coach and two as an assistant for the New York Giants, where his game plans against the Buffalo Bills are very influential. Um, His game plan against the Buffalo Bills and against the greatest show on turf, 2001 Rams are some of the most crucial and recognized game plans to the history of pro football and defense in general because before Bill Belichick got his hands on those offenses, those offenses were nearly unstoppable. Uh, Bill Belichick was a three-time NFL coach of the year and he had a regular season record of 237 and 115, which continues to evolve to this day. Uh, New England is... 201 and 71 with Bill Belichick at the helm. His postseason record was 26 and 10, is 26 and 10, and continues to evolve as well. As I'm doing this video, he just won his fifth Super Bowl championship and is going to continue to add to his totals. He was on the 2000s All Decade team. He had a career. He has a career record of 261 and 125. He's also the New England Patriots general manager. So not only is he the best head coach in the league, but he might be the best GM as well. He had 14 divisional titles and 11 conference championship appearances, which is absolutely ridiculous, especially in today's NFL where everybody is meant to be equal. That is the most impressive thing I think I can bring up for Bill Belichick is his game plan and his influence on coaching when it comes to coaching with different teams every single year. He has to get rid of players, sign new players, and develop them in his system every single year. He doesn't have the luxury of having the same players go through his system year after year after year. He has to continue to develop and find new players to build in his system, which is the absolute most impressive part of Bill Belichick's NFL career. He's had some of the best teams in NFL history. He has the most modern dynasty with the New England Patriots. And he has fielded the greatest quarterback in NFL history. Bill Belichick is the greatest coach, in my opinion, of all time for his ability to adapt, for his ability and knowledge to know every area of the game, for his ability to be more prepared in every situation than every every coach that he goes against. Uh, Bill Belichick is the ultimate weapon when it comes to coaching. He's the biggest reason, more even than Tom Brady, the reason why the Patriots dynasty has been so successful over the past 17 years. So Bill Belichick is the best coach in NFL history. I think it's time that we can safely say that. Um, I know that there are going to be the haters out there for me saying this, but Bill Belichick is the greatest coach of all time, followed by Vince Lombardi, Paul Brown, Don Shula, Bill Walsh, Tom Landry, George Hallis, Chuck Knoll, Joe Gibbs, and Curly Lambeau. Those are the 10 greatest coaches in NFL history. Uh, there are also a lot of honorable mentions that I will be- I will leave in the comment and the description boxes, so make sure that you check those out if you're interested to see where some of your favorite head coaches landed. Um, some of them will probably be in the in the actual honorable mentions page, But for now, these are the 10 greatest NFL head coaches of all time, with Bill Belichick being the greatest of all time and continuing to add to his legacy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Mitch of The Bottom Line View. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Peace out.